Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. We're going to get started right on time or one minute after on time, just because this is a short session. So thank you all for taking time to come to our presentation today. My name is Elaine Kwok. I am the Senior Directory of, Director of Marketing at Peak Power. And if you're not familiar with us, Peak Power deploys, operates, and optimizes battery storage, grid interactive buildings, and electric vehicles using a single software platform for our customers and partners to pursue net zero goals, cut operating expenses, and unlock new revenue opportunities. We've got two great presenters today that are going to be taking you through the financing options and strategies for battery energy storage system projects. Um, if you have any questions at all, there is a Q&A button on the bottom, and you can put in your questions there. You can also upvote other people's questions. And what we're going to do is when we get to the Q&A portion, we're going to prioritize the, uh, the, upvoted, the upvoted questions. If you have any other questions at all, just about the presentation or anything else, please feel free to put it in the chat below. And before we get started, I actually have a couple questions for you. Or maybe I might wait because <laughs> we don't have a ton of people here yet. Uh, you know what? We might wait till the end on this. I think we've got some stragglers coming in. So in that case, I would love to introduce Archie, one of our presenters today. He is our Director of Business Development for Peak Power. Archie, on to you. Thanks, Elaine. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. Um, we're joined today by Pablo Parage, uh, Vice President of Energy Storage at Madison Energy Investments. Um, so, Pablo, I'm going to turn over to you to provide an introduction to Madison and uh, to Energy Storage. Thanks, Archie. Uh... Yeah, at Madison, we, we, at Madison Energy Investments, we, we build, own, and operate distributed generation assets. So mostly solar and storage assets uh, with, with a focus on, on the CNI, the commercial industrial uh, scale, and some, some small utility scale. So we're, we're, very, we're very experienced on this. We have over 200 solar projects in uh, more than 25 different states. So we know every single different market how to deploy this. And, and about 20 of those projects are energy storage projects. Um, they're usually based in batteries today. And, and they're always either generating savings or revenues to our customers. So we, we are the ones who are gonna own the, the asset and maintain the asset, operate the asset. And our customers uh, just have to worry about collecting uh, revenues or, or, or seeing savings in their utility bill. Elaine, you're um, back. I guess, yeah. Oh, I mean, <laughs> I can take us through the agenda if you like, or Archie, would you like to get started? Sounds good. Uh, yeah, so we're going to start with the big picture and sort of context for energy storage. And then I'll speak to customer cited options and where it fits behind the meter and what it looks like at your facility. Um, understanding the ownership structures for these uh, deal trade offs and, and term lengths, um, and then preconditions for what makes a successful project. Then we'll wrap up with uh, the current favorable markets for battery energy storage projects across the U.S. So what we're, big picture is, is, I like to say the future is bright uh, for energy storage, for renewables in general. Uh, we look at this, this, this type of projections. I've been following this for energy storage specifically since 2015. Uh, the advisory firms, uh, very well reputed, like Bloomberg, uh, that, is, that you see there, and, and many others very well reputed, uh, make these projections. And every year, they, 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 they update it. And every year, they usually say, oh, we were wrong last year. It's actually even steeper curve. It's actually even more than what we thought. So this keeps happening. Uh, as if you put it into perspective, you see we're in 2023. Now it's really becoming a, 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 a big chunk uh, of, of, of the investments in new capacity in the United States uh, and around the world. Uh, it, it's interesting to see if you, if you look at uh, uh, this year, there will be more energy storage capacity deployed than 
gas generation, gas generating plants than gas generation. Just think about how incredible that is, right? Who would imagine that? You would say that one or two years ago and people would probably say you're crazy. That's gonna take a long time or might never happen. So that, that's a reality now. If, if you think or also that by 2030, and remember 2030 in our industry is around the corner, right? It might take, uh, it might take especially on big, big projects, it might take years to permit or, or go through interconnection queues and, and deploy this, this, this the any generation type asset and storage is a generation type asset. Uh, in this context, and it, just storage will account for 10% of the U.S. capacity, all built in a short span of seven to eight years. So that's a that's an incredible thing to to think about it. And 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 when we talk about uh, these numbers, it also includes obviously distributed energy resources, and and that's where we focus our work, peak power and Madison Ener Energy Investments as well. Uh, on on this type of working with customers, commercial, industrial, universities, munis, uh, on 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 finding ways of deploying energy storage uh, in a way that will either generate savings or generate revenues for these customers. Thanks, Pablo. That's helpful context, uh, sort of a, a larger scale, and I'm going to zoom in a bit and look at. Um, and a, an explanation uh, of what, what a project at your facility might mean. Um, so starting with standalone storage, it's a battery that's installed behind the customer's meter and connected to the building's main switch gear. Um, generally, this battery charges overnight, and then it discharges to reduce the building's load during key hours. Uh, those, those key hours are grid uh, where the batteries can participate in demand response programs and provide capacity uh, to the grid during high demand or grid stress. Um, and also facility peaks. So an intensive manufacturing process or a heating and cooling spike driving HVAC loads. Um, the batteries can reduce the customer's load uh, to manage and reduce utility demand charges um, and shift consumption around tub use rates. So those demand charges in particular, uh, if you take a look at your uh, utility bills, you'll see that those can make up a substantial chunk of that. And we can use these batteries to reduce that and generate some savings. Um, so peak power is operating the batteries to uh, generate a, a pool of savings, um, and then the, the savings are shared with the building owner through a fixed payment or through a shared savings structure. So the standalone energy storage is, is really uh, primarily providing economic benefits and savings for a facility's bills. Um, on the other side, we have solar plus storage. So if your building has space to add uh, solar as well as storage, um, that solar uh, would be installed uh, on steel structures and parking lots called carports or canopies, um, or also on building rooftops, uh, if that's a structural fit. Um, so the solar generates electricity and the building buys that uh, through a lower cost power purchase agreement. And the battery can charge from that solar or from the grid, and it creates a, a value in a similar way to the standalone storage project that I discussed. The battery also allows for more solar to be installed behind the same meter at the facility and uh, is charged with excess solar during the middle of the day. And then it discharges during the late afternoon, early evening when the sun's going down. Um, that means that the building can use more of that solar that's generated on site. Um, so in addition to the financial benefits of the energy storage, the combined solar and storage system provides environmental benefits through GHG emissions reduction. So I, I like to think of it as a, a solar and storage is a winning combination, peanut butter and jelly, bacon and eggs, um, for the New England fans, uh, Tom Brady and Bill Belichick. Uh, so looking at ownership structure, uh, when I say third party ownership, uh, that means somebody like Madison coming in and financing the project, and then Peak Power uh, working with partners to install and then operate that battery, just for some clarity there. So the pros of this third party structure, it's not requiring capital from your facility. Um, there's no operational burden. Um, it's a, just a turnkey solution and it's cash flow positive. So, um, you know, imagine money coming back into your energy budget each month. Uh, the drawbacks are that there's the savings are shared between the third party owner and the host, um, and it's a longer term agreement. Uh, Self ownership uh, is kind of the other major um, alternative route. And that's keeping the full savings and revenues for the host. Um, 
but it, it's a substantial uh, investment up front. These are multi-million dollar batteries uh, and solar is a major expense as well. Um, oftentimes folks don't have operational and management expertise in-house. Uh, it's challenging to have you know, facilities managers take on more to an already full uh, load of work. Um, and it's also a higher cost for a one-off project. Um, so sort of cutting in the middle of leasing uh, agreement, it's a shorter term agreement that's helpful uh, for folks, but it also, um, uh, it can be less cost effective. Um, it still you know, requires the same infrastructure and the same connection to a facility. So um, trade-offs here, I think it's helpful to, to understand the alternatives available. So one of the things that we, we hear in talking to folks is, wow, this sounds like a really great idea. You can give us a, a free battery, uh, with no capital, and we don't have to, to operate it. Uh, what's the catch? It's too good to be true. Um, and you know, I, I'd say that the, not a catch, but, but a real key part of the deal is a long-term agreement. Um, so you know, we're, we're gonna invest uh, in the facility and install a battery there. So we need a long-term agreement to make sure that we can uh, get a return on that project and that there's enough time to, to build that back. So we're typically looking at a, at least a 10 year agreement to recoup the investment. Uh, another key thing is that this, this is a great uh, opportunity for folks. Um, and Pablo will talk more about the different markets in a moment, but it's really key to have the right facility. Um, so looking for a, a building that has a single meter um, because the battery is going to be installed behind that meter and is gonna generate savings for that meter so if there's a whole bunch of them, oh, imagine an apartment building with you know, 10, 20 meters, it's a little bit more difficult to, to make the project work. Um, we're also looking for larger demand profiles. So looking for buildings that have a, a minimum uh, peak demand of at least 750 kilowatts, um, which is you know, a, a large commercial real estate facility and manufacturer. Um, you need, need to have some space, as you can see in the picture, uh, it's typically adjacent to the building, and we wanna tie that into um, the electrical room most you know directly um and then we do want to have the the battery in the facility located in a, in a territory that has a, a very favorable incentives that help uh, make the project work uh, so with that i'll turn it over to pablo to talk more about where those uh, territories are today and what it looks like thanks archie J just a comment on all the pictures that that you've you've been seeing on this presentation are current and actual projects that the the peak power deployed or or that Madison owns, uh, so and the pictures really show right. You you need space, yes, you need space. Usually, uh, storage comes it has been very successful to be deployed because it needs little space, uh, that, and that's the truth. You, you usually, you can site it almost anywhere. You you need to find some enough space, but you can see in the pictures for that type that that size of loads, it, it could be something that looks like a, a smaller cabinet or, or that 20 foot size uh, uh, shipping container uh, uh, standard size. So uh, it's really easy, really easy to deploy. And, and when we look about where do we deploy it uh, <clears throat> geographically, this map is focused on commercial and industrial or distributed size up to five megawatts usually, give or take, depending on the market. Uh, this is not, uh, this is not comprehensive for all energy storage. Uh, if you if, if if you think about utility scale, there are many other states that would that would be colored here, showing utility scale. So because our focus here is just distributed energy, uh, these are these are the ones that we're showing. So there is usually uh, some price signal or or market design construct that allows for the battery services being provided to be monetized and that's and that's what we look for and and it varies a lot from place to place so in ontario for example you get charged a, 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 a system demand charge that it could go as up as 60 70 percent of our utility your utility bill at the end of the month so there is a way to deploy batteries uh to be dispatching when those those hours are measured and then you can save that 70% of your utility bill, and that's what pays for the batteries. And there is a shared, shared savings with the customer. When you go to Massachusetts, very, very, and, and by the way, there's hundreds of energy storage already deployed in Ontario. Um, 
uh, at this at this size that we're talking about. Uh, if you go to to uh, Massachusetts, for example, uh, there is a there, there are state programs that will compensate who deploys solar with energy storage paired with energy storage. So that example is the, the, that topology that Archie was explaining at the beginning, solar plus storage. And, and that would give a fixed rate for, for, for 20 years. And that would allow to have a long-term uh, agreement working with the host, uh, the end customer becomes the host and also providing revenues, those revenues, then, then it's not savings. That's the other side. Uh, when you can actually be generating revenues with your facility by using your roof, and putting a battery next to it, and we can do all that. And state by state, those are a couple of examples that you're going to find. Maybe Puerto Rico or, or, or Hawaii, uh, the, the utility rates are so high that solar plus storage that will, will, will be more than compensated uh, by, 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 by the savings by not buying the utility rate all day. Uh, and you'll find other states that will give you, that will give the project even a, a a rebate, right? They'll pay for a big part of the of the storage system just for uh, 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 commercial and industrial uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, ratepayers to deploy storage because they have uh, state policies mandating we need storage. Storage will help cover the peak when everybody's using the storage. They're not stressing the grid, and when the grid's most stressed, those those assets are actually helping. Uh, lower that 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 stress on the grid. So, so you see, there's a myriad of, of ways of monetizing storage. It depends on on the state or the market, and that's exactly what we know how to do. Not to say that there might not be other opportunities in the states that are not colored. Uh, there might be specific regions or utilities that have or co-ops that have high demand charges, and that could also be be monetized, and we could could evaluate. But at first glance. If you have multiple facilities, then you can uh, 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 overlap your map of facilities with this map and say, hey, I have facilities in Ontario, in Illinois, in New York, in Massachusetts, in California, or in any of these places, that uh, will be a good place to start uh, uh, looking at those and not at the ones that are not on those places. Awesome. Thank you so much, Pablo. So now that we have a few more people in, we would still love to get to know more about our audience today. So I'm going to launch a poll for you with a couple of questions. And this is also the opportunity for any of you who have any questions about what we've discussed so far to pop that in the Q&A. So, all right, I'll give you an, uh, an option or to answer these first of a couple of questions. We still have some questions or some people answering the questions. Really interesting to see that a lot of people have not implemented a project yet. So we will be sending an email soon after and you will get some info, uh, some information about this. Uh, we'll be giving uh, just a little more information about what we've covered today, as well as uh, how to contact Archie. If you, you just have any questions all right here, let me show you all the results. Super, super, super interesting. So a few of you have uh, deployed some battery storage projects, and it is lovely to know that you are, most of you care very much about economic and environmental goals. Yeah, so. The environmental goal is it's interesting. One thing that storage can help straight away, really, really easy to, to calculate is 
when there's a go to offset energy consumption, so you, you're putting solar because that might offset 50% of your consumption. If you add storage, that might, because you can charge during the day that it, that it might be over generating more, more, more than what you need at noon, you can charge into the storage and discharge in the evening when the sun is gone, you might be going up from 50% now to 75%. And that will help you reach that goal while at the same time you are producing, uh, in that case, savings. Thanks, Pablo. Um, so looking at the q and I think we have one question that came in live about the um, incentive books. Um, those are those are great resources. I know that Lane will share the links um, for both New York and Massachusetts. Uh, those are fantastic to, to dive in and, and learn a little more about some of the programs and the ways that, that batteries generate uh, value. Um, so I certainly point you to, to those as a resource. Um, we also got a question that came in uh, beforehand. So we've got one ready in the hopper. Um, Pablo, a question for you. Uh, how do you see the current interest rate environment impacting battery energy storage financing? Yeah, that's a that's a that's an interesting question, right? Every 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 single industry obviously is being impacted by that. How 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 this is impacting energy storage deployment? It it's it's actually very very interesting that it's a it's a headwind, obviously, but very recently uh, with the IRA passage, uh, if you're not aware of, there's a very important point for for the energy storage industry. Uh, the ITC, the investment tax credit that that solar, uh, wind, and, and other renewables get uh, by by deploying renewables, that that's about thirty percent of the of the capex that can be that can be recouped through through a investment tax credit system. Uh, since September, or since the law was passed in September, uh, uh, for projects starting this year, so already projects being deployed since January of this year, uh, they you can be a standalone storage system and also have the thirty percent ITC. So whatever it costs more to finance, uh, it's still a lot cheaper than it was last year because you can recoup basically thirty percent of of the capex. So more tailwinds. Tailwinds are stronger than the headwinds. Basically, that's the answer. Yeah, certainly uh, helpful to hear. And and uh, yeah, that that was a, that passage of that act was a great uh, boost to to the industry and for adoption of renewables and, and storage. Um, another question that came in prior to the start uh, was about EVs and charging. Um, so I'm going to answer that. Um, EVs and, and imagine adding EV charging to your facility. So imagine a commercial uh, real estate facility in an office building. Uh, with chargers installed for employees to use, um, employees showing up and plugging in EVs can can really alter the uh, demand profile of your building. Um, so we know there's going to be widespread EV adoption, um, and having chargers is kind of a perk that that employers are starting to offer um, for their employees to help bring them back to the office. Um, so yeah, those EVs plugging in can really spike the demand on the facility, which results in higher demand charges. So. Energy storage uh, with EV chargers behind that that same meter can help uh, manage those spikes and help keep the the demand charges at a reasonable amount uh, each month. All right. Well, if that's all of our questions today, I would love to invite all of you to uh, to sign up. For our next, oops, there we go. Our next webinar um, that will be taking place on May 16th, where we have some people from Peak Power and we also have some partners from DNV and Hatch Engineering talking all about the development process. So, same thing, short and sweet, 30 minutes. Um, so, thank you, all of our presenters. Thank you so much, Pablo. Thank you so much, Archie, for sharing this valuable information. And thank you much so much for our attendees for joining us. Uh, please keep it on your email. We'll be sending out a post uh, survey. Oh, I just see something, is there a Q&A? <laughs> I wanted more, John <laughs> Well, um, you know, if you want some more, send me an email. You have my email. <laughs> Let me yeah, know what you want to hear. And, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> reach out and, and we can keep this going. Um, otherwise, thank you so much everyone for your time. And <laughs> have Thanks a great all. day, everyone.
Thank you so much. Thank you. Have All a right. good day, everyone. Thanks. <laughs> Bye.